Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another lesson. We're slowly piecing our task one essays together, and the good news is we're almost there. But before we get into how to answer the various question types, we're going to look at some useful vocabulary, sentences, and phrases for task one. Let's get started. Right, so we know that for writing task one, we'll be presented with a graphical representation of information. And as we saw in the previous lessons, they usually ask us to summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and making comparisons wherever relevant in at least 150 words. Now, when it comes to vocabulary, useful sentences and phrases for task one, it's actually important because they contribute to your lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy score. Let's start by looking at some useful vocabulary. Useful vocabulary number one, increase, decrease, rise, and fall. These words are used to describe changes in data trends. This is easier to see on a line graph, actually. Useful vocab number two, peak and bottom. These words describe the highest point and the lowest point and the bottom point of a trend. These are actually great words to use as they are not too common. Useful vocab number three, fluctuate, vary, fluctuation, and variation. These words describe changes in a graph that are not consistent or predictable. These are easier seen on line and bar graphs. Useful vocab number four, proportion, percentage, fraction, and ratio. These words are used to describe the relationship between two or more parts of data. Useful vocab number five, subsequently and or consequently. These words are used to describe cause and effect relationships. In contrast and or on the other hand. Now these phrases are used to compare and contrast two different sets of data. Significant, notable, and considerable. These words are used to describe data that is particularly noteworthy. Consistent, uniform, and steady. These words are used to describe data that is stable and unchanging. Well, let's move on to learn some useful sentences and our phrases for this task. Let's start with the introduction. You can begin with the following. The chart, the graph, the table presents information about the data shown in the chart, graph, and or table provides an overview of the chart, graph, or table illustrates, or depicts, or shows. Now, when you want to go on to describing trends, you can use the following. There was a steady increase or decrease in. There was a sharp rise or a sharp fall in. The data showed fluctuation and or variation over the period. There was a significant and or considerable and or notable increase or decrease in. Now, as a question asks you to make comparisons wherever relevant, you can use these sentences to do so. First of all, in contrast, data for a specific category remained relatively stable and or constant. Or, on the other hand, the specific category you're talking about experienced a significant increase and or decrease. Again, you can also say, while certain categories showed a slight rise, the next category experienced a substantial fall. There will be times where you might have to or want to describe proportions, and for that, you can use these to do so. When you're describing a certain category, you could say, the category accounted for the largest or the smallest proportion of, or the proportion of said category increased or decreased steadily or rapidly over the period. Or you can also say the specific category was dominant or secondary factor in. And last but not least, for the concluding paragraph, remember that task one does not require a conclusion, but you can write a sum up of sorts, and you can do that by using the following. First of all, overall, the data suggests that, or to sum up, the chart, graph, or table indicates that. Also, remember to use appropriate transition words and connectives, such as moreover, furthermore, in addition, however, nevertheless, likewise, etc to ensure smooth flow and coherence of your writing. All right, there we have it. A few sentences, phrases, and vocab you can use to achieve a great score for task one of the IELTS academic writing section. It's finally time to put all that we learned in the last couple of lessons, including this lesson, into action. During the next couple of lessons, we will be learning how to answer the various question types that can or would appear for writing task one. 
So do stick around for that. It will definitely help you and give you good practice for the exam. See you then.